Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Thank you guys all for coming. And um, this program has been going on for about a month now. And I just wanna say thank you for everyone who has partic participated in my program by signing up and who was interested in my program. Uh, my name's Emily, I'm a freshman in Battlefield High School. And I thought this, this um, training would be very beneficial for you guys. There's more people in the waiting room. Okay, let me reintroduce myself since there's more people. My name's Emily. I'm a freshman in Battlefield High School. And I okay. I made this training so because I thought it would be beneficial for all of you to learn how to engage the kids more in the sessions. Um, Ms. Mongillo will be giving a quick presentation. And then afterwards, I'm hoping you guys would talk about the experiences in um, the sessions and what worked and what didn't work with the kids. Thank you all for what you're doing. I think this is an amazing program and especially this year being as challenging as challenging as it is for all students, I think it's so great that you're forming those relationships with students and you're giving them another reason to be motivated to read. So thank you for that. So I'm Mrs. Mangillo, the reading specialist at Alvi. I'm gonna share some strategies with you tonight for engagement and comprehension and also for prompting when the students that you work with make errors in their reading. But at any time, if you have questions, ideas, concerns, please jump in because I know that you're the ones who are working with these particular students each week. Um, Emily, are you able to give me permission to share my screen? Um, yes. Okay. Okay, does it work? Yes, thank you. Okay. So as Emily said, and I mentioned before, we're going to talk a little bit about some of those strategies so that you can even better support your buddies. And then we'll spend some time having you share successes and ask questions. And I'm sure you'll be able to learn some ideas from each other. I did want to start with this one quote, and I'm sorry, it's a little bit blurry, but this really speaks a lot to me with the students that I work with. And you might come across some of these students in your time that there really are not kids who hate reading. They just haven't found the right books yet. And so if you come across kids um, in your virtual reading buddy sessions that you feel are maybe a little bit more hesitant or reluctant, sometimes it's just a matter of trying to steer them to a book that really hits home. And I see that so often with kids is like, once I find one book that I can get them interested in, then they, they kind of take off from there. So just keeping that in mind. So in thinking about comprehension for your students, the way I kind of broke down this first part is thinking about before they're reading, while they're reading, and after they read to you. So one really important thing to have them do before they read to you is preview the book that they're going to read or preview the chapter that they're going to read or the article, whatever it is. And often we teach our students to preview and by looking at the text features and the title and the pictures and a lot of times they don't just do this so if you're able to kind of prompt them like hey let's take a a picture walk let's preview this text let's see what we think it's going to be about because that really helps them to activate their prior knowledge and to set a purpose for their reading and then ask them what do they predict that that chapter or book is going to be about but they've got to give you some text evidence so even if you wanted to use the sentence frame with them to remind them like I predict that because they've got to use some evidence to support their prediction. And then one thing that you should keep in mind when they're reading to you and you want to ask them questions to kind of keep them engaged and make sure they're understanding, but trying to not always ask questions that have one right answer. Asking a lot of open-ended questions can really get the students thinking. So I included just a couple here, but thinking about making inferences, asking them, you know, how is the character feeling right now? How do you know? Like, what's, what is your evidence for that? And also, you know, asking them, what are they wondering right now? 
And this clarify one is, is really important too, because a lot of times students, if they come across a word that they can read, but they don't know what it means, they'll often just keep going. So if you can kind of help them to stop after every couple of pages and you know, ask them, are there, are there any words that you're not understanding or that are new to you or unique? And then take some time to talk about those words in the context of how they're being used in the book. So this strategy, Stop, Think, Paraphrase, is great for helping students to chunk the text and then to remember what they read. And this is something you could start doing with your buddies. Um, it can work with any level of student. We have, you know, kindergartners doing this, um, fifth graders doing this, because it's with the text that they're reading. So to do Stop, Think, Paraphrase, you would have your reading buddy read a chunk of text. And really, that's a matter of what is a good amount of text for them. So it could be a page, it could be a chapter, um, it, it could be just every two pages. So they'll read that part. Now it says cover with their hand. If they're reading on the screen, maybe they could, you know, minimize or stop sharing or kind of turn away. And the reason for that is because we don't want them to be paraphrasing just by reading it out of the text. So really we want the students to be able to put it in their own words. And if they can put in their own words, what they read, that means they're understanding. So getting them to stop and think, what is this about? And then saying it to you, to, your, to their buddy, what did they just read? So I'm just gonna show you that for a moment. Um, so let's say that your reading buddy was reading this book about jellyfish. You and, and the buddy maybe kind of set a goal that after every two pages, they would stop, think, and paraphrase. So just if you want to take 30 seconds just to read this, I won't read it to you. And then when your buddy is done, you know, whether they have a physical book and they can close it or cover it with their hand or you can minimize it on the screen, then they're gonna think, what did I just read? And then retell it to you in their own words. So I just read that there's, you know, lots of different types of jellyfish, that jellyfish can be transparent. Now, sometimes they're going to not be able to do that. They won't be able to paraphrase. And that's a good sign to you as, you know, their, their buddy that maybe, they can only read right now one page of text and then stop or maybe they need some modeling from you of like how do i paraphrase how do i put it in my own words so often i'll model for students not being able to put it in my own words and then i'll show them okay i don't remember what this was about i was thinking about eating pizza for dinner and i have no idea what i just read so let me go back and reread and I show them how I reread and I really take a moment to think about it and then I put it in my own words. And this is really helpful with, like I said, all levels of students. And then another great way to engage them is getting the student to stop and jot, to write something down after a certain amount of text. And so this little kind of bookmark here, I can send to you all as well, is just a reminder of these are some different times when readers stop and think and can jot something down. And whether you want, um, if you're able to share your screen and, and they prefer to type, they can type their jot on the screen or if they have sticky notes at home or even a whiteboard, you know, maybe after every two pages, you want them to stop and jot something down or after every chapter. Um, this is also good for engagement for students who maybe, like I said, will read through a, a long, large amount of text and not remember what they read. If they know they have this accountability piece, like, okay, I'm going to have to write something that I'm thinking right now that's going to help them to kind of stay focused on what they're reading. Any thoughts or questions so far? Doing okay? Okay, you guys are quiet. <laughs> Must be in snow day mode. <laughs> okay, so after reading, um, when I listed these questions here, I actually pulled from the DRA, which is what we give our students to assess their reading in school, and usually it's given at the beginning and the end of the year. But these are some of those key questions that they have to answer. So even, um, you know, our younger students need to be able to say what the most important information is in the text, or what do they think the author's message is. Um, retelling is something big for our, especially K2 students, to be able to retell a story using specific details from beginning to end. 
Um, I always find this one, the making connections kind of challenging for some students is, you know, they'll make a very literal connection. Like there were shoes in this book. I have shoes, you know? So we want to encourage them. Okay, well, what happened in this story? Did it happen to you in your own life? Or, you know, have you read another story that had a problem similar to this? So these are some great questions to ask after reading. And you don't want to necessarily ask all of them because that's going to take a lot of time. But maybe, you know, one week you want to focus on retelling. You really want that child to be able to retell to you using, you know, beginning, middle, end. And so here's one thing that can help with the retelling piece. So this is the five finger retell. And this visual is often very helpful for students. So if they know that there's these five key components of a retelling, they're more likely to be able to do that. So we want them to be able to retell the characters. So, you know, that's their thumb. Um, the setting, which sometimes students don't exactly remember some of the vocabulary. So that's where you as the buddy can also come and really support them. And okay, setting is when and where a story takes place. What do you remember about what you read? Um, the problem of the stories, and oftentimes our older students in elementary school will be referring to this as the conflict, um, the events of the story, and the solution. So this is a visual, and I will send this whole PowerPoint to you all in case you wanted to share your screen at any time or, or keep these as notes for you. So this here, I know it's a little bit small, but this is a great visual for you as the reading buddy. Um, because these are the systems of strategic actions that readers do. And this whole top circle is thinking within the text. So when we're solving words or we're summarizing, all of those things are while we're working within the text, kind of on that literal level. So even summarizing, which is hard for our students, is considered kind of at the surface level. But it's great if you can push your buddies to thinking beyond the text. And that's like we said, the predicting making connections, um, synthesizing, being able to put everything together and kind of come up with the big idea. And then this one here, thinking about the text, like that's where we're talking about like, what did the author do and why? Or why did the author include those text features? How did that help you, help you to understand as a reader? So just thinking about trying to push our readers just a little bit further because that rigor is gonna be really helpful to getting them to the next level. So I heard from Emily that you guys are doing a really good job with trying to get them to, you know, figure out words as they read. And that's awesome because, you know, so often sometimes students will just kind of either give up or they just want to be told and they don't want to take the time to problem solve. Um, so here's some things that I know that you're probably already doing some of these things. I do have mentioned on here that you don't have to correct every mistake, right? Because that can be kind of defeating for students if every single mistake that is made, we're kind of pointing that all out. So maybe just picking, you know, one or two on each page, or, you know, even for some of the younger students, just one on each page. We can prompt them to look at the picture, but we know that doesn't always work, especially for higher levels of text. Getting students to back up and reread it again can be helpful. Um, sometimes we know skipping the word, you can say, you know, let's try skipping that word, read the sentence without it, and let's come back. And sometimes that can be helpful because they can use the context. And then sounding out the word, and I know that's something that you're already encouraging, but one thing I want to encourage you to try is getting them to try to analyze their own mistakes. So let's say that they said something that didn't make sense. So what you can do is say, I heard you say, and point it out in the text if you're sharing the screen. Um, I know it might be hard if you can't see the book that they're reading, but say, I heard you say, does that make sense? So let me give you an example here. Um, I have a lower level text here. So this is about um, animal homes. And let's say here on page three, they said some bats live in caves, the like the dark. So then you could draw their attention and say, okay, I heard you say the like the dark. Does that make sense? And then they're trying to think, okay, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Let me go back and look at that again. So it's that kind of getting them to analyze their own errors that can be really helpful rather than you saying, no, that's they. 
getting them to see it first because kind of the main goal of when students make er errors is we want them to be able to self-correct. So when teachers are listening to their students read, they're keeping track of all the times they correct their mistakes. And that's really a good thing when they can do it themselves. And sometimes they will say a word. So you saw on that one that the and they, they looked similar. So you can see why they would make that mistake. Sometimes they'll say a word that isn't visually similar, but it does make sense sometimes. So let's see one here. So maybe for this sentence on ground, they might say some animals live in the dirt. Well, that makes sense, right? You can see why they would say that. They might be looking at the picture. So then you can draw their attention back to it and say, okay, I heard you say some animals live in the dirt. Something's not right there. You said some animals live in the dirt. Does that look right? And kind of draw their attention. They will probably realize, oh, wait a minute, that doesn't start with a D and they can hopefully figure it out or get closer to the answer from there. So those are just some really good ways. And if you're consistently using that language with them, they'll get used to, okay, I know he or, he or she's gonna ask me that when I make a mistake to try to figure it out. So here's just another visual of some of those things that we talked about. Um, but sometimes for students, like, like we said, you could tell them to say the first sound and finish the rest of the sentence. So oftentimes if they can say that, after they finish the sentence, they'll probably hopefully be able to figure out what that word is. So there is a great link and I'll share that too, where you can share the screen and have the students actually build some of the words. So after maybe they read to you and you notice some of the mistakes that they were making, they could take the time with you to kind of build some of these words. So you could give them remote control of your screen um, if you're able to do that, or you could sh um, share the screen and kind of model it for them. So let me just show you that for a moment because sometimes it's just that extra practice. Maybe there was a sight word that they missed often. So this is great for the virtual setting. Maybe they missed said and you wanna go over with them. Okay, I know said is a little tricky because it, it doesn't follow the rules. Let me show you what it looks like, right? And then you can say, now study this word. I'm gonna have you build it a few times. You can reset it. If you're able to use the remote control, if you have that setting available, or if not, maybe you can put the link in the chat and they can share their screen with you and they can build the words. So this is another way just to engage them in that practice of you know, word recognition and sounding out words. And then I know some of you might have, like we said, some reluctant readers. Um, maybe they don't, they don't like to read or their stamina is lower. So one thing that often really works well is just saying to them, okay, I'll read a page, you read a page. And let's just do that the whole time. I read, you read. Because then it takes some of the load off of them that they feel like, okay, I don't have to read every single page. I still have to listen and understand. Um, so that sometimes for students, that's enough. Um, graphic novels can be great and even things where you can have different parts. Maybe there's, um, you know, I'm thinking in, particu in particular right now, of, it's not necessarily a graphic novel, but like the Piggy and Elephant books where you could be one character and they could be the other character. And that's also kind of motivating for them. And then I, I could tell from Emily's email that you guys are also reading to them. And I think that's awesome because then that gives them access to higher level text and, you know, vocabulary and they can hear you model fluent reading, which is great. But maybe even trying some different incentives for students who, okay, we're going to set a goal today. We want you to be able to finish this many books. And if you do it, you know, I'll read to you from this book that, you know, we that you chose or something like that. Find something that really interests them. Or, you know, if you read this number of books today, maybe we can have some drawing time on the screen where you take like three minutes and you let the kid draw on the screen. That could be something motivating as well. So I know I went through that kind of quickly. Um, and I know that Emily really wanted to have like a dynamic discussion here. So I just kind of put these questions on here like, I know that things are going well, and I definitely want to pop in and see this in action sometime after the break. So what is working well? Does anyone want to share with us something that's going well? Oh, I wanted to say something when you yeah. had the question, but I couldn't get my thing off. Oh, <laughs> yes. Mute. But um, 
can you like drop links to like some like online books because it's kind of hard for us to read or like try and correct them when they're reading a book to and you can't see it. and we can't really see it yes yes absolutely I will send that and some of them um I will get, send you ones where they, you don't need login information, but for some, all the students in K3 are going to be getting uh, login soon for the program that I just shared books from Literacy Footprints. So I can let you know when that goes through, because then you can say, hey, today, why don't you log into Literacy Footprints and let's read one of the books that your teacher assigned there. But I'll definitely send some links. Thank you. Yeah, that's very challenging when you, you can't see. <laughs> Anyone want to share something that's going well I think uh, I'll just add one thing I'll, yeah. something else um one thing that's going well is that when I read to like some of the kids sometimes we'll have like a group of like more than like like two to three kids and then like I can all ask them each like a question and yeah. they'll read like a page each and like they'll just go off from each other oh that's great yes I a lot that. of times um the kids would make connections to the book. Like one time I would, one little girl was reading to me and it was about um, ice cream. And then she stopped and she was like, I really like ice cream. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So they're, they're usually pretty good at that, connecting to themselves, which is good. Um, I know when I was like, had someone read to me, um, he was older. So he was reading a chapter book. Yeah. And I didn't like stop him while he was reading because he was kind of in it. But at the yeah. end, I like asked him a series of questions. Like yeah. I noticed the time and I asked him like, what was your favorite part? And then I also told him what my favorite part was or like my favorite character and that sort of thing. Yes, so, that's yeah. great. I've noticed with a lot of students, just asking them, like, what is this making you think? A lot of times they're like, wait a minute, I, you're asking me a question where, like, I just share what I'm thinking. And that's a good question to ask, though, because they often don't even realize that they are thinking while they're reading sometimes. So if you just say, like, what did that chapter make you think? Or what did that page make you think? Because um, it always breaks my heart when they're like, uh, nothing. I'm like, no, you were definitely thinking. I promise. What are you thinking? <laughs> A lot of times I, um, a lot of the volunteers would ask, um, what was your favorite part of the book? And then they would say in detail what they liked. Okay, mm -hmm. that's great. And a lot of times they would read two books and volunteers would ask which one is their favorite. Yes, mm -hmm. awesome. And are they pretty good at giving evidence for why? Yeah. Yes, that's great. So it sounds like a lot of things are going well. Um, I have also the question of like, what other work? Like, what what are you thinking next for? Now, Emily, do you guys have the same buddies each time or it changes, right? No, it changes, but you can okay. like ask for the same buddy. Okay. So if you were to think about maybe one thing that you would want to improve or maybe that you notice that your buddies need, what would you say that would be? Um... Maybe to um, maybe speak louder because sometimes okay. like we won't hear them and maybe to um, um, like think about their text, the, the book they're reading more because sometimes they would mindlessly read yes. without, um, without like the volunteers asking questions. Okay, yes, that's good. And you know, even if you wanted to give them a chance to kind of be the teacher and maybe they could come up with questions and ask mm -hmm. you. So say, now I want you to be the teacher. What questions could you ask me about what we just read? And that might yeah. help also. Anybody else? You guys are quiet. <laughs> um, does anyone else want to share an experience or what worked for them? What would you say is the hardest part about doing this virtually? Maybe, um, probably because you can't see their books. Yes, yes. I know from like when I used to be a reading buddy, like in elementary, like, yeah. um, it was like more easier because it's like, you can like, like Emily was saying, you could read and you could see their book, you could see their mistakes and like, you could actually like have more fun with it. Yes. But like, it's like, from the other side it's like 
you can't really help them as much as you want to. Oh, right. Exactly. It, I feel like so much is harder in this setting, especially with uh, reading and writing. I don't, I mean, you guys are in high school, so you're probably finding different challenges in your <laughs> learning environments, but yes. So I will definitely send some links and, you know, I'll let Emily know and she can share out when that Literacy Footprints account is on. Also, every student at Alvi has a MyOn account and they can access books that way and share yeah. the screen with you too. Do you ever have any of the buddies who do that? Not yet. Um, no. Not too much. They usually read off of actual books. Okay. Which I'm sure makes it harder to like to help them and notice the mistakes and things like that. Yes. Any other successes or things that maybe, you know, I could also share? Well, most everyone in the um, Zoom is coming to just see how like the program is like. Okay. So yeah. So they're gonna be starting soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I definitely wanna come. When is the next session after the break, Emily? After the break, um, probably, I haven't set up a, um, okay. but I'll, I'll give you the, what's it called? The sign of genius. Okay. And I'll yes, I would love to just kind of pop in and see mm -hmm. and maybe I can, you know, come up with some further ways. But I mean, I really want to thank you guys for what you're doing and giving up your time and forming those relationships. And thank you to Emily for organizing all of this. I didn't realize you were only a freshman. That's a, some good <laughs> incentives there to you know to be able yeah. to put that together and thank you so much for all the um diagrams and the powerpoint i think it was really helpful and oh, i really learned a lot awesome. thank you um, i'll share that with you and some links for books um, if there's anything else please let me know and i can certainly help out there all right well i think that's it Yes. So thank you guys so much for coming and thank you guys for taking interest in my program. I will have a new Sign of Genius up soon. It will start after the break and I'll send it out during the break. It's thank every you. Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I, okay. I mentioned thank you to so Emily much. too, I, I, would send, I was going to send it out to the emails that I sent to the parents of the students that I'm working with. I'll also send it to them each week maybe to you know, get some more students hopefully coming. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you guys. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for all you're doing. Enjoy the rest of your snow day. Bye guys. <laughs>